So your question. Um, what attributes, how would you describe God, your Christian God? What attributes would you assign to him? Right. So the question is, what attributes would I assign to God? I can't give a, 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 a full list because the list isn't even in my the full list isn't even in my mind. Level, just general, a couple of the One question at a time. If you want to debate, come and step in. Do you want to debate? No, no, no. Wait, let's be clear on terms. You've asked a question. I'm going to give an answer. If you try to debate, you come in. Otherwise, you let someone else ask a question. Which do you want to do? I would like to ask a couple of You will wait each time then for someone else to ask a question in between. Right. Or you come in and debate. Come in and debate. Come in and debate. Come and stand here and debate. Right, I'm, I'm standing here with the bait right. with you then. Okay, okay. great. So, right. so let me answer the question. So the attributes. Before we start, bro, I'm gonna let, have to let you know that I'm leaving soon. Yeah, that's fine. That's so, fine. like, this yeah. is not gonna be a long debate. Okay, that's fine. Right, but fair enough. You asked me a question. What are the attributes of God? Here's some of the attributes of God. God is love. God is spirit. God is one. God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is all powerful. God is all knowing. God is all present. God is the giver of prophecy and the giver of gifts. God is the giver of the fruits of the Spirit. God is creator. God is sustainer. God is redeemer. God is resurrector. God is the first. God is the last. God is... Um, all virtue and all truth embodied. Enough? Okay. Um, Is I'd that like, enough or like do you want more? No, uh, yeah, that's enough for, for now. Right. If you want to give more afterwards, could, would you include narcissism in that? Okay. So is God narcissistic? No. No. Okay. So, you said earlier, people that reject Christ yep. will be condemned to burn forever. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. So, essentially, he says... You must worship me or you will forever, all eternity, suffer. Narcissism. Also, would you say ignorance was an excuse? Right. So somebody that hasn't heard about, been taught about Christianity, will they be accepted into heaven or will they be condemned for lack of knowledge? Right. So allow me to address both the point that you made mm -hmm. and then the question. So ladies and gentlemen, why is it that those that don't accept God are condemned to hell according to the Christian belief? It's simply this. If you do not accept God, you are in rebellion. You are in rebellion against your ruler. You are in rebellion against your Lord. You are in rebellion against your king. Who is in any doubt that if we were to rise up in insurrection against the state that the state would not punish us for the crime of rebellion. Right now in this country, we have lies spread against thousands of people who are being thrown into prison because they are being described as far right and they're being thrown into prison for years for merely memeing something or tweeting something. How much more would the state rebel? It, how much more would the state punish us if we rebelled against our rulers? But you're now, comparing us wait, human wait, don't interrupt. Don't interrupt or I'll interrupt you. Okay. Let's have a calm debate. You asked, made a point, I'm replying to your point. Okay, so, when you rebel against God, the punishment is hell. But God in his mercy has and does call out to us through his church founded by Jesus Christ to accept forgiveness that he offers liberally and generously to all. Now the question was, what about ignorance? Is that an excuse? The Bible teaches 
that there is no excuse because there is no ignorance. A man who looks at nature can know that he has a creator. And one who knows that he has a creator will know that he must worship his creator. And so, ladies and... Don't interrupt till I'll interrupt you. And so, ladies and gentlemen, there is no one who he has an excuse because there is no one who lacks knowledge of his creator except by willful ignorance. Yes, right. But Jesus, you specific, you didn't say except to God. Human, humans all over the world have some sort of spiritualness. We're looking for something. You said if you don't accept Jesus, you're going to hell. Yes. Now, Muslims, just keep any, going, any, going. Any other religion, okay? Just keep going. Why, why would they then be condemned to hell? If they believe in a greater power, they want to live their life morally by good standards, how would they be condemned to hell? Some tribe in the Amazon, just because someone like you haven't walked up to them, told them about Jesus. Arrogant. In preaching Arrogant. Christianity, you are condemning people to hell that don't want to accept it and that uh, have their own religions. That to me is a sign of a narcissistic God. Worship me or you're done in hell. Right. And that's, uh, that's what I don't understand. That's what I struggle to, is to get with. Can I, can wait, 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 wait. Let, no, no, bro, 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 bro. Mm. Let us have a debate. Mm. Right, guys, he asked about, he, he may, he's referencing the fact that as a Christian, I believe you must accept Jesus Christ. I absolutely do. I believe that. However, ladies and gentlemen, the scriptures teach us that you are judged according to what you know. So one who does not know about Jesus Christ is not judged on what he does not know. He is judged on what he does know. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in Romans chapter 1, verse 18, it says this. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because that which is known about God is evident within them. For God made it evident to them. So Paul is saying that in nature you can see that which is righteous and that which is right and wrong. How do you know this? You don't Why? Need Jesus for don't that. interrupt. If you interrupt me again, I'll start interrupting you and you'll complain. <laughs> don't, I'll interrupt you and you'll start complaining. Or if you keep interrupting, I'll just stop. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the scripture is teaching that you can know that there is a God by just looking at creation. If you know that you have a creator, you know naturally that you must have thankfulness to your creator. If you know that you have a creator, you know that your neighbor has a creator. If you know that your creator created you for a purpose, you know that your neighbor is also created for a purpose. And so you know that you should treat your neighbor as yourself. Right. In other words, thank you, that's right. That's right. That's but you right. Don't need so, in other words, ladies and gentlemen, you are judged based upon what you know. Now, how does that then correspond to Jesus? Let me, let me land. You, this is your argument I'm responding to. So, that means that those who don't know about Jesus will be judged on what they do know. Those that know about Jesus will be judged on how they respond to the person of Jesus. Those that reject Jesus unto hell and those that accept Jesus unto salvation, just like those that accept their creator unto salvation and those who reject their creator unto hell if they don't know about Jesus. So to clarify then, Go on. So to clarify, no, he's, I'm talking to him. Ignorance um, then is an excuse. If you haven't been taught Christianity, as long as you live your life by morals, like I say, I, I don't subscribe to any religion, but I'll live my life by... Uh, I, I Do you want me to quickly clarify that in one sentence? Um, okay, ignorance. 
People will be judged by what they know, not by what they don't know. Yes. So ignorance is not an excuse. You will be judged based upon what you know. Yeah, so if you don't know something, that means you're ignorant of it. But Willful you will be ignorance is yeah. if I choose but, but to But you won't be it. but you won't be judged on that. Yeah, so exactly. You'll, you'll be judged on what you do know. Yes. Fantastic. Right. So, so I in would other go words, to in other words, it isn't ba you're not saved through ignorance, you're saved through accepting what you do know. Yeah, so basically a non-Christian can go to heaven is essentially what I'm getting at. Yeah, if they don't yeah. know, if they don't if so yeah. for example, I'll give you so, an example. But then people go into preaching. I'll give you an example. Then condemns let, people to hell that let, let me, to let me that give you an example. Let me yeah. give you an example. Okay. So let's pretend that there's some animist, right, who yeah. believes in spirits of his ancestors. Yeah. Right? Who never ever gets to hear about Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's, never even comes up. Right? Yeah. But that animist, through the use of his own reason, through reflection upon creation, comes to understand, because it's all there in creation, it's all evident in creation, yeah. that he has a creator that loves him, mm -hmm. that cares about him, that embraces him, yeah. right? And he, because of the love that he acknowledges in creation that's been shown towards him, he then tries to live a life of love yeah. to everyone else in his tribe. In other words, he is as much as a Christian as he can be without being a Christian. Yeah. He can be saved and that is the teaching of Christianity. Fantastic. Anyone who teaches something different yeah. hasn't thought through Christian doctrine properly. Yeah. So non-Christians can go to heaven, which is fantastic. If they accept. If, if they live their life like God knows everybody's heart. So he knows even if you haven't had the opportunity to know about Christianity or any other You're religion. You're about to say something that's wrong, I feel. Okay. It's God. not if they live their life as in doing things. It's if they accept the truth that is available to them and then live accordingly. It's the acceptance of the truth that saves you. So yeah, accepting that there's some greater power is the reason. Not some here. greater power, a creator. A creator, yeah, the creator is the great the, the thing is, No, no, the thing is, you're trying to make it just generic. I'm okay. saying that it has to be specific. Like a, you're, so you're saying a conscious entity? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. If you but believe... I'll, but I'll say I can believe, I think that creation doesn't have to be out of consciousness. Right, so let's go back to the like animist. A, so let's go back to the animist in the village. Yeah. If an animist came to believe that some cosmic energy created them, yeah. right? but did not understand that that cosmic energy would, you know, is a personal loving God, then I would be far more in doubt that they would be included amongst those that are saved. Because nature doesn't point towards an accident. It points towards a designer. And a designer is a conscious mind. Would you like me to demonstrate that to you? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can do. All right. And then after I've demonstrated it, I'm going to have to bring this to a close yeah, once you've fine. replied. So I'm going to take you through the steps of an argument. Do you know, do you, do you accept that maths is a language? Maths is a language, yes. Right. Do you accept that languages must emerge from mind? Um, In other words, you can't have a language yes, without yes, mind. Yes, yes. So premise one, maths mm, is a language. No. Actually, You're saying it's not a language? Uh, no, I'm, I'm saying mass is a language. Thank you. But to communicate and have language, you don't need... Uh, like no, no. Can you have languages without minds? Without minds? Okay, no. Right. So premise one, maths is a language. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Premise two, you can't have languages without minds. Agreed? Agreed. Right. Premise three, mathematics is found in the universe around us. We discover mathematics. Um, discover maths in and the universe. We, we use maths to describe a reality. We discover. So, let, let me give you. Let me say. Let me explain why we discover mathematics. Mm -hmm. So the mathematics that we use to describe the universe mm -hmm. is on such a grand scale. It's like ten to the power of four or ten to the power of seven. Depends what you measure right? in, but yeah. Right. Exactly. It's of such a precise nature that it is impossible for us to do those maths in our head. We can't do those maths in our head. We use computers, yeah, to, yeah. right? We've got limits to our... Exactly, which means that 
mathematics mm -hmm. is being discovered in nature because the numbers are too big for us to think. We have to use computers to do the computations because no human can do the computations. But what's that got to do with God? Right. What's that? What that demonstrates is that we are discovering mathematics in nature. Mm. We use mathematics to describe reality. So we're not discovering a math. We will make an observation right. and then make measurements based on that. We're not discovering maths. That is the language to describe our observation. So I get what you're saying. Yeah. I get what you're saying. You don't need an example. But what I'm trying to point out to you is that we are discovering observations that are so precise that no mathematician, even if all the mathematicians in the world sat in the same room, they couldn't do the computation. Yeah. That's why we use supercomputers to do the computations yeah. in physics. Or even just my phone calculator. Or even, my yeah. Shit. Exactly, right. <laughs> so my point is, it's, it's, it's your mathematics being shit writ large across the whole of humanity. Yeah. We're discovering mathematical precision in nature. Do you accept that point? No. No, no you don't. No, we just use mathematics to describe, like, nature isn't giving us the maths. We can, we, it's like a centimetre, okay, a ruler okay. is mathematics, a res measurement. Whether we call that, that a centimetre, you call it an inch, yeah. they're just variables of a measurement. We yeah. don't discover the measurement, like time, for example. We learn, that is a description right, one second. of just the, of one second. the passing of I'm, I'm going to prove you wrong now. Okay. Because if you look into childhood development, mm -hmm. a baby learns to count before they can talk, and they learn to count from observation of nature. But do you know what? One, wait, 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 one second. Learning to count one is second. needed as building one second, language. One second. But that's the, one second. But the point is, what the point is, mm -hmm. in terms of childhood development, and you can look this up, mm -hmm. a child learns to count between me and my mother mm -hmm. because of nature, because of the fact that me and my mother are not the same. In other words, literally, we learn to count because of nature. In other words, we are receiving mathematics from nature okay right do so, you accept that no so this is so this is it, where, where you bring that child right the reason why children learn to count before they can learn to speak properly is because it's much simpler to learn one to ten than learning words a five letter string of words much harder to contemplate or comprehend when you're a baby okay but one two all single syllables much easier for a child to learn that's why they would take on numbers before they then develop the language. Let me ask you this question. Let's try and approach this the other way. So I've demonstrated, I believe, quite fairly, through two examples, that we receive maths from nature. Example number one. Mathematics in physics is of such a precise nature, no human being can compute it. So we are discovering the precision of mathematics in nature. We aren't inventing it. Number two, we learn to count even in the basics, one, two, three, four, from nature. The existence that one, two, three, four can be seen is what teaches us to count. Now, that, 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 but let me try to approach it from another angle. Two plus two is true universally, always, and at all times, do you agree or disagree with that statement? I agree, that's why I prefer science over religion. Thank you, right. Yeah. No, wait, wait, no, I'm not, I'm not having him. No, well, go then. I'm having a, no, I'm going, I'm having a debate with him. So, ladies and gentlemen, he's just agreed that two plus two is always true everywhere, all the time. So, in other words, we have a truth that is eternal, universal and absolute. What human language describes everything accurately, always, everywhere and at all times? Nothing. No human language does that. <laughs> which means that, and thank you, he said nothing, which means that mathematics is not from the mind of man. Mathematics is from the mind of another being that can speak always, everywhere and at all times because two plus two is always true, everywhere it's true, all the time it is true. Uh, one question. Go and reply to that. Reply to that, well, I just, 
don't agree with the whole like, premise of what you've been saying about... Tell me what's two, wrong with the premise. Okay, so some maths can be wrong, yeah? And some so, um, old predictions of, say, like the celestial movements, okay? They get more and more accurate over time as we get better and better at the mathematics. Our as our observations get better and better. Yeah, as our technology for observing get better, yeah. Yeah, exactly. observations get better. So, and then that can then slightly change what we may have thought previously. It doesn't mean, for example, like uh, gravity. Newton and Einstein, Einstein increased our understanding of gravity, but uh, so Newton didn't have his full understanding of gravity. So over time, we're understanding more. That doesn't mean that there is a God. Right, Just, can I reply? Yeah. Because the premise of the argument was not built on observation. I tried observation, you rejected it. I built the argument based on a rational consequence. If two plus two is true at all times, in all places, everywhere, then that means since it is mathematics and mathematics is a language... Not all maths is... One like second. That. One second. I didn't interrupt you. Yeah, sorry, go on. That therefore, mathematics is the production of an eternal, infinite mind. Because it is always true everywhere at all times. You have got to demonstrate what is wrong with the premises. Now, you try to argue that not all mathematics is true. I want to point out that that is false logic. Why? Because all mathematics is true. However, however, not all mathematics has correspondence in nature. Not all mathematics describes nature accurately. Isaac Newton's description of gravity was not wrong. It was just incomplete. Yep. His mathematics was not wrong. There was just more maths to be discovered. And when Einstein discovered more maths, he discovered a better description of gravity. Okay. That is not to say that Isaac Newton's maths was wrong. There are examples of mathematical paradigms that don't have correlation to nature. But I would offer as counter argument that there are examples of mathematical constructions that were invented before, ladies and gentlemen, the observation that proved the maths. One example would be the lensing of light around a black hole or even the existence of a black hole. Mathematically, it was demonstrable, be, uh, math, it was a logical consequence of the maths before the observation. We had Einstein's theory that gave us lensing of gravity and the existence of black holes before we observed either the lensing of light around a black hole or a black hole itself or around a galaxy. And so we had the maths before nature showing that we are discovering maths in nature. Okay. Final point, when, math mash, when mathematicians talk about their work in maths, almost universally they talk about discovering mathematics, not inventing mathematics. Don't believe me, go and ask a mathematician. So on, on the black holes, the reason why Einstein came up with that is because he was observing interactions within other things. Not true. It wasn't, no? Theoretical. He couldn't make a cup of tea. Oh, yeah? It was a theoretical... No. Out of his mind and then he... No, uh... you're both wrong. You're both wrong. <laughs> Einstein was a genius, and his theory of relativity and special relativity has unlocked huge amounts and has been demonstrably proven again and again and again and again and again by application of his theory and by hypothesizing on his maths to things that we can expect to observe and then later we observe them. One example is the lensing of light and the other one is black holes that were both predicted by the maths before they were observed. And why were so they you're predicted? both wrong. Why were they predicted? Because the mathematics leads us to the consequence. So, so yes, it's like two so, plus so two is true so all the time. Newton, he observed Newton's laws. Come That's to not why he came to that theory. Why did he want to, why did he investigate it? Why did he theorise black holes and, and like you say, and, well, gravity? I, I don't, the, no, it was, I can't, I can't remember exactly what it was and so I'm not going to pretend. But what I can say, it wasn't that he was, 
He wasn't investigating he Isaac Newton's theory. He was he was absurd. He was doing something else, and I forget what it was. We didn't do experiments. We couldn't make it out. Brother, like you're so wrong. Einstein was a genius, and I'm not going to have the guy mocked. He was brilliant. Right, right. Really bro, we're yeah, just nice. going to have to stop yeah. there. Yeah, cool. Can I, brother, have you got a Bible? Um, I do, actually, yeah. Do you read From it? From my nan. Um, yeah, I do every now and then. Right, I'd like to give you a gift, if I may. Give me a gift. Yeah, I'd like to give you a gift, if that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, just this, uh, there you go. Legal. <laughs> it's the Gospel of John for everyone. It's not a Gospel John of John. Everyone. It's a commentary on the Gospel of John. Okay. So I hope it is a blessing to you in your education. Lovely to talk to you. Sorry we can't debate any longer, but I've got to go. All right, God bless. Take care.